good evening all uh, my topic today is uh, techniques of elevation and bone grafting in uh, depressed tibial plateau fractures uh, they can be uh, either a split depression where the cortical rim is broken or it can be a pure depression where the cortical rim is still intact right and uh, we can uh, so we can divide the depression based on whether the hinge is intact the hinge can be intact either medially where we find that uh, there is continuation of trabeculae between the rest of the bone and the depressed uh, fragment or the skin can be intact uh, the entire depression can happen in the anteroposterior sagittal plane where we find that uh, the tibial plateau line is not clearly seen lateral tibial plateau articular surface is not clearly seen in the ap view however uh, we see a depression in the lateral view with the intact hinge on the anterior side right um, So uh, the second type is a broken hinge, where uh, it can be subclassified as uh, when the uh, when the hinge is broken both in all, both the medial and lateral, L, and uh, there is no con con continuation of trabeculae between the depressed fragment and the rest of the bone. It can be either a upright fragment or it can be a, where the articular surface of the depressed fragment is parallel to the articular surface of the rest of the tibia, or it can be a tilted fragment and or a turned fragment where the articular surface is. is not parallel with the rest of the uh, rest of the uh, particular surface of the tibia or it can be a multiple depressed fragments so minimally invasive technique is uh, uh, um, is uh, there are various ways to elevate one of the ways a minimally invasive uh, technique which can be applied when there is a single large fragment with the intact hinge and the depression is either central or posterior and it is usually done in young patient where the bone quality is good So we done uh, we do it by two methods either by a medial cortical window using a bone tamp or by using a stem and pin elevation technique so in a medial cortical window we use series of uh, bone tamps with varying sizes from 3 mm to 10 mm um, uh, in this patient we see in, this is a case example where there is a intact anterior hinge hinge and the aim of our uh, uh, minimal invasive elevation is we have to get the uh, elevating rod perpendicular to the perpendicular to the articular surface in all the planes that is the depressed fragment and to the center of the depressed fragment in all the planes and so here is a demonstration video demonstration where uh, so initially we have marked the patella and the tibial tuberosity and uh, uh, this is the initial cm picture with the we mark we make a uh, incision and uh, uh, and uh, make a pilot hole with the 4 mm 4.5 mm drill bit it and uh, we serially enlarge the hole using the mm -hmm. bone tamp and uh, we initially start with 3 mm then finally we reach the 10 mm um, and place it in the center of the depressed fragment and and then elevate it since the anterior hinge is uh, intact we find it uh, we find the fragment to get elevated evenly and uh, this can the, whenever the fragment is whenever the fragment is uh, has a intact hinge uh, we can continue we can do our elevation under image control itself so we when we face problem is when our uh, when we we are, we are not able to get the, the uh, elevation rod or from the medial side <coughs> perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular to the depressed articular surface in those cases uh, we tend to maneuver a lot or turn which can result in widening of the uh, widening of the depressed widening of the our window medial window and this can result as a stress riser so in, in case uh, the stem and pin elevation technique is an another technique where which can also be used used when the uh, when there is a, a single large fragment and uh, when there is a intact hinge and here this is another case example where there is a intact hinge on the anterior side right and um, so we use a stem and pin pass it uh, we we need to assess the a pre op ct well so that we can locate our pin carefully and pass it perpendicular to the sorry pass it parallel to the articular surface of the depressed fragment and then lever it down so that uh, the metaphyseal bone on uh, below the entry acts as a fulcrum Um, and it gets depressed as the fragment gets elevated so the it is important to get a correct entry and the correct pin placement and then get it elevated by levering it down so once it is elevated we uh, secure the because it, these are large fragments we can secure them with the screws which will prevent uh, which will prevent and further collapse helps in the post operative period uh, so we have published this technique of pin elevation in indian journal of orthopedics this year Uh, and uh, this uh, so we recommend minimally invasive elevation and with either of the technique under image control when there is a intact hinge 
So uh, whenever there is a broken hinge with the single upright fragment, that is the fragment as articular surface, which is still parallel to the rest of the bone, on, uh, we can elevate with the pin technique, eh? but we need to have a joint visualization and uh, joint visualization while elevation. So in this patient, we also had the uh, patient also had a ACL, uh, in ACL, this patient also had a ACL, uh, ACL avulsion injury. Eh? So, um, uh, we have elevated using the uh, pin elevation technique eh, and, uh, uh, and uh, following the pin elevation because the patient had a ACL avulsion, arthroscopy was done. This is the pre-elevation uh, arthroscopic video where the crater can be clearly visualized. Right? And this is the post-elevation arthroscopic video so where uh, we find that uh, uh, the crater has been, uh, the defect has been filled by the elevated fragment. And, and uh, the, usually we do it by a uh, submeniscal arthrotomy, uh, we visualize and then elevate because this patient also needed an ACL uh, uh, avulsion suture pullout uh, repair, uh, the arthroscopic, uh, uh, very, uh, arthroscopy was also done. So in case of uh, broken hinge elevation, minimally invasive technique under uh, elevation under visualization and uh, uh, direct visualization needs to be done, mostly done under uh, by submeniscal arthritis. So whenever there is a broken hinge with multiple depressed fragments and some tilted articular surface, uh, we all be uh, so uh, here uh, it is uh, the broken fragment is more in the posterior aspect act right? with the post posterior cortical rim also fractured and uh, so we have done a force approach which, uh, where we can uh, access uh, uh, through two windows anterior window is uh, anterior to the lcl and uh, biceps tendon and uh, where anterior uh, suprafibular submeniscal arthrotomy is done to visualize guys nice. and we can also do a posterior uh, window uh, to uh, uh, where we can do a posterior uh, uh, submeniscal arthrotomy or uh, uh, where we can uh, through which we can visualize the uh, depression and the plating is done through the anterior window uh, so this is uh, here uh, the elevation is done through a lateral cortical window and uh, and elevation rod or done and, uh, and elevation is confirmed through the uh, through the uh, submeniscal uh, arthrotomy uh, to, in order to visualize uh, we keep a bowl uh, we keep a um, uh, uh, rolled sheet under under the pill under the knee under the thigh so that there is some amount of wear stress which will uh, result in opening out of joint which helps in visualization so in case of multiple depressed fragments or uh, those where the articular surface is tilted at uh, the elevation under direct visualization by submeniscal arthrotomy is uh, preferred so when to open and elevate uh, when we cannot achieve satisfactory elevation when there is a when there is multiple depressed fragment or when we suspect a, a meniscal en entrapment and uh, whenever when whenever there is condylar widening or there is impaction of the femoral condyle into the tibial condyle we must suspect meniscal entrapment and and this can uh, this will need uh, we should we should be prepared to do open open reduction and uh, re and uh, release the entrapped uh, meniscus so this is a case example where the articular surface is uh, committed and uh, depressed into multiple fragments and uh, so here is a video of uh, uh, video where uh, the incision is made uh, centering the gerdis tubercle and this is the iliotibial band and uh, the initially the lateral soft tissue is erased from the proximal aspect of tibia uh, for, for to pro, for, for sliding the plate right and the anterior aspect um, anterior soft tissue anterior to the iliotibial band is erased to expose the lateral cord lateral uh, lateral con uh, condyle split fracture and the split is opened out like a book uh, to visualize the entrapped meniscus as yes, and uh, once the entrapped meniscus is uh, it uh, the uh, it is uh, uh, suture is secured through the meniscus on the periphery and it is uh, pulled out laterally uh, above the uh, above the uh, split lateral condyle I'll and uh, the, because the fragments are multiple and uh, we use an osteotome um, to get under the entire fragment with some amount of subcondral bone still at the, still uh, leaving a some amount of subcondral bone with the articular surface yes, and elevate it as a whole. So once it is elevated, there is a huge void. Right? Uh, we generally use a cancellous allograft at um, a cancellous allograph to uh, as a reduction tool to prevent the uh, to prevent uh, uh, to prevent the collapse of the elevated surfaces before uh, applying a plate. 
so in case uh, in case of multiple depressed fragments we prefer uh, open elevation and uh, when we use uh, bone grafts as mainly as a reduction tool we we prefer cancellous allograft uh, than other synthetic uh, bone graft because it uh, mainly helps in uh, it also helps in impaction of the impact we can impact the allograft or the grafts have uh, come uh, which uh, uh, where, whereas the other synthetic uh, allografts such as uh, um, um, calcium phosphate uh, uh, cement or or um, calcium sul um, or uh, um, hydroxyapatite crystals mainly act as a wide filler so thank you mm -hmm.